This video provides guidance on the use of personal protective equipment to mitigate hazards at the post-fire scene, focusing on respiratory protection. Research proves gases and particulates are significant respiratory hazards that persist long after the fire is out. Cold scenes are not safe scenes. Walking, moving objects, and digging disturbs debris, which releases toxic substances that can remain suspended in the air for hours and cannot be seen by the naked eye. The size of the fire and the time elapsed since the fire are not accurate indicators of the potential hazards. Exposure to particulates is a risk at all fire scenes, including open-air environments. You must wear proper respiratory PPE at every fire investigation. The information in this video is drawn from OSHA, NIOSH, Scientific Studies, and Fire Investigator Health and Safety Best Practices, 3rd Edition, developed by the IAAI Health and Safety Committee. You should read the Best Practices document, as it summarizes important scientific information and provides detail on protective ensembles and practices. The guide is available for free at IAAIWhitePaper.com. OSHA, OSHA State Plan, and other government regulations may apply in your jurisdiction and affect the PPE you must wear. Know the applicable requirements. Your organization should have a written PPE policy for post-fire scenes. The Site Safety Assessment informs PPE selection. PPE must be worn at every fire scene, but it should not be the first and only protection method. Lessen the hazards using other methods in the hierarchy of controls first. Take the CFITrainer.net Site Safety Assessment module to learn more. Hot Warm Cold Scene Category plus Hot Warm Cold Zone Division informs PPE selection. Scene categories are time-based, and scene zones are distance-based. Hot Scene A. The fire was extinguished, but overhaul has not begun or is in progress. In most circumstances, fire investigators, evidence technicians, insurance personnel, and other professionals who work at fire scenes will not need to enter a Hot Scene A. Hot Scene B. The fire was extinguished and overhauled less than two hours ago. Warm scene. The fire was extinguished and overhauled between 2 and 72 hours ago. Cold scene. The fire scene has been fully extinguished for at least 72 hours and is not generating detectable or visible gases or particulates. If these substances are still visible, it is a warm scene. Remember, Lack of visible particles does not mean particulates are not present. The visibility guidance only means that if particulates are visible, it is a warm scene. Particulates can be smaller than the naked eye can perceive, so there may be particulates that are not visible. Assume invisible particulates are present when choosing PPE. Once the scene category is established, divide the scene into distance-based zones. These zones apply regardless of the time elapsed since the fire was extinguished. Hot zone. The portion of the scene that includes the burned area, the potential collapse zone, and any adjacent debris field or area, and to which access is restricted to only those required to enter. Warm zone. The area immediately outside the hot zone of sufficient size and shape to limit exposure to contaminants and include the necessary decontamination areas. Cold zone. The area outside the warm zone. Wear appropriate PPE, including respiratory, in all zones except the cold zone. The cold zone is where you don and doff, remove, your PPE. Complete gross decontamination in the warm zone, then immediately move to the cold zone. The respiratory protection appropriate at the post-fire scene is SCBA or APR. SCBA SCBA and structural turnout gear are appropriate for hot scene A and B and some warm and cold scenes. 
A particulate blocking hood is recommended in hot A, hot B, and warm. Air Purifying Respirators, APRs An APR is an elastomeric air purifying respirator that uses a particulate filter, cartridge, or canister to reduce the amount of contaminants in ambient air before you breathe it in. Ambient air must be breathable for an APR to be used. Filters can be N, R, or P series. N is not resistant to oil. R is somewhat resistant to oil. P is strongly resistant to oil. Use only P filters in the post-fire environment. The IAAI recommended minimum respirator assembly while in the hot or warm zone of every warm and cold fire scene is either a half-mask face piece with goggles or a full face piece fitted with a P100 particulate filter with an OV, AG, FM, gas vapor cartridge, if following U.S. descriptions, or an A3, P3 combination filter, if following U.K. descriptions. The filter and gas vapor cartridge can come as one assembly or be combined before being attached to the face piece. The P100 OV AG FM filter cartridge assembly removes 99.97% of particulates down to 0.3 microns and protects from organic vapors OV, acid gases AG, and formaldehyde FM. CBRN CAP-1 canisters can be used when specified by organization policy. P100 filters are magenta or have a magenta label. An OVAG FM cartridge has an olive band on the label. Filtering face piece respirators like N95 masks or dust masks are not APRs. They are not suitable for fire investigation scene work. They do not protect against vapors like formaldehyde or against nanoparticulates. SCBA and APR protect you only when they are properly fitted, maintained, and stored. Respiratory Protection Fit Testing A respirator fit test is a protocol to verify that a respirator is comfortable and delivers the expected protection. A fit test can be qualitative or quantitative. The testing protocol verifies that the user's respiratory system is isolated from the ambient environment. A fit test cannot and should not be performed if there is facial hair adjacent to the area of the respirator that seals against the face. Fit testing is conducted by trained personnel according to OSHA-approved procedures. Fit testing is required at least annually for all mask types, half-face, full-face, and SCBA. Coupled with the fit test is an annual medical evaluation to ensure that the wearer can meet the physical requirements of wearing the respiratory protection. Donning Respiratory Protection Don meaning put on PPE in the cold zone, beginning with apparel. IAAI's Best Practices document recommends Outer garment appropriate for the scene category type Helmet that meets or exceeds ANSI Z89.1-2014 Type 2 or its equivalent, recommended to be fitted with a chin strap and high visibility markings. Hearing protection that meets or exceeds ANSI A10.46-2020 or its equivalent in situations where hearing hazards are present. Eye protection that guards against flying particles, sparks, and liquid splashes and meets or exceeds ANSI standard Z87.1-2015 or its equivalent. Wear gas-proof safety goggles if using a half-mask face piece. Inner nitrile gloves and disposable leather palm outer gloves or similar. If wearing structural gear, put on nitrile gloves first, then the turnout coat. Secure the thumb loops, if any, then put on the outer gloves. Water-resistant, steel shank and steel-toed, or composite shank and composite-toed, leather or rubber boots or shoes with a puncture-resistant sole. Then proceed to SCBA or APR according to the scene's particulars. K-1 
Keep cartridges in their airtight packages until use. Remove the respiratory protection from its storage container or packaging. Inspect the respiratory protection according to the manufacturer's instructions to confirm it is clean, undamaged, and in working order. Check the cartridge's expiration date. Do not use filter cartridges that are expired, open, damaged, or stored in open air. These may decrease the cartridge's effectiveness. Don the respirator and adjust the fit as needed until the seal is tight. Immediately after donning the respirator while preparing to enter the scene, conduct a user seal check to make sure you have donned the respirator properly. Perform a seal check every time you use the respirator. Use a positive pressure or negative pressure check based on the type of respirator. To conduct a positive pressure user seal check of a half-face or full-face negative pressure air purifying respirator, exhale gently while blocking the paths for air to exit the respirator. A slight pressure buildup in the respirator without any leakage indicates a successful check. To conduct a negative pressure user seal check of a half-face or full-face negative pressure air purifying respirator, Quickly inhale while blocking the paths for air to enter the face piece. A slight face piece collapse indicates a successful check. Once you complete your hot and warm zone work, proceed to the cold zone and follow the decontamination, removal, and cleaning procedure for the scene category. Make sure you are set up with a decontamination station, including running water, if possible, fresh potable water, and cleaning supplies like wipes or cloths and brushes. Following decontamination, doff, remove PPE, where the warm zone meets the cold zone, downwind from your vehicle as soon as possible after completing work in the hot and warm zones. Doffing SCBA and structural turnout gear. Loosen the SCBA straps. Working with a partner wearing full PPE, use a low-pressure hose to rinse off turnout gear, starting at the helmet and working down. If water is not available or the weather does not permit rinsing, use a poly brush to lightly brush off the turnout gear from head to feet. Prepare two bags large enough and sturdy enough to hold the PPE you will remove. One for gear to be cleaned and one for gear to be disposed of. Additional bags may be needed if the gear to be cleaned is too bulky for one bag. Remove the structural gloves. Place them in the cleaning bag. Leave the inner nitrile gloves on. Remove the helmet and place it in the cleaning bag. Remove the SCBA. Place in the cleaning bag. Hold your breath. Pull the hood over your head and place it in the cleaning bag. Exhale. Remove the turnout coat and put it in the cleaning bag. Fold down the turnout pants. Remove the boots and pants. Place them in the cleaning bag. Remove the nitrile gloves and place them in the disposables bag. Seal the bags with duct tape. Clean exposed and transition skin areas with decontamination wipes, soap and water, or waterless cleaner. Transition skin is the skin below where different apparel items overlap, such as at the wrist under where the sleeve cuff and the top of the glove overlap. Place cleaning materials waste in the disposables bag. Seal the bag with duct tape. Change into clean, dry clothing and footwear. Storage and disposal. Place the sealed bags in the vehicle's utility area. Do not place bags with contaminated gear in the passenger compartment or trunk.
Shower as soon as possible, preferably within the hour. Dispose of the disposables bag according to your organization's procedure. Do not leave the bag at the scene unless a remediation company will dispose of it. Do not throw the bag in household garbage. Clean the reusable PPE that was bagged during doffing as soon as possible. Doffing an APR and the recommended PPE ensemble. Prepare two bags large enough and sturdy enough to hold the PPE you will remove. One for gear to be cleaned and one for gear to be disposed of. Brush off any visible debris and particulates from the helmet and outer clothing. Remove the outer gloves and place them in the disposables bag or cleaning bag accordingly. Remove the helmet. Wipe it with a damp cloth. Place the helmet in the cleaning bag. Place the used cloths in the disposables or cleaning bag based on their usage. Gently take off the attached hood of the disposable outer garment if there is one. If a Nomex hood is worn, remove it and place it in the bag with reusable items to be cleaned. Gently unfasten the disposable suit and pull your arms out. Roll down the suit, inside out, to the top of the boots. Stepping out of the boots and suit, remove the boots and set them aside. Put on other footwear. Place the suit in the disposables bag. Wash the boots with soap and water. Set them aside to air dry. Make sure they are fully dry before sealing in a container for storage. Remove the eye protection. Set it aside. Remove the respirator, taking care not to cross-contaminate facial areas. Use a damp cloth to wipe off the respirator and eye protection. Place them in separate sealable bags, like plastic zip bags, for later cleaning. Do not mix them with the apparel. Remove the inner gloves and place them in the disposables bag. Clean all exposed and transition skin areas with decontamination wipes or soap and water. Remove hearing protection and place in the disposables bag. Place used wipes in the disposables bag or cleaning bag depending on usage. Close and seal all bags with duct tape. Change into clean, dry clothing to travel. Place sealed bags in the vehicle's utility area. Do not place bags with contaminated gear in the passenger compartment or trunk. If contaminated gear must be transported in an area of the vehicle that is open to the passenger compartment, place the bags in an airtight container. Shower as soon as possible, preferably within the hour. Dispose of the disposables bag as previously described. Clean the reusable PPE that was bagged during doffing as soon as possible. Cleaning. To clean reusable apparel from a scene, first put on nitrile gloves and an APR. In an open area, remove the gear to be cleaned from the bag. Separate the outer shell from the liner. Place the machine washable items into a washing machine or extractor and wash. Do not mix fire scene gear with other clothing in the same wash load. Wash in separate loads. To clean reusable PPE from a scene with soap and water, select an open area, don nitrile gloves, an APR, and eye protection. Wash the respirator, eye protection, helmet, boots, and other reusable items with water, mild soap, and a brush or similar tool. Clean the helmet inside and out. Rinse all items with clean, running water. While wearing nitrile gloves, gloves may be washed with soap and running water, like washing your hands. Change out the helmet's sweatband periodically as needed or as specified in the applicable SOP.
Respiratory Protection Storage Prior to storing a cleaned respirator, inspect it according to manufacturer instructions. Seal cartridges in airtight packaging. Place the cleaned gear in a clean, hard plastic tub with a well-fitting, tight lid. Store the sealed container in a clean, dry place away from extreme heat or cold. Respiratory Protection Inspection Inspect your respiratory protection before and after each use according to the manufacturer's instructions. This process should include a valve and diaphragm check to ensure they are in working order. Replacement Cartridges, filters, and masks wear out and must be replaced periodically. Consult the manufacturer recommendations regarding filter and cartridge service life. Service life depends on the respirator's filtering capacity and each scene's hazard concentration. Some cartridges may be single-use or single-use for a specific hazard exposure. To determine when to change the filter, follow the manufacturer's recommendation, the end-of-service life indicator appropriate to the conditions, and or your employer's change schedule for canisters and cartridges. In addition to following these guidelines, the IAAI recommends changing the filter if breathing becomes slightly more difficult, you smell an odor while wearing the APR, or the filter has more than 40 hours of use. To track time, note usage on your scene examination log. All post-fire scenes require PPE, including respiratory protection. Using respiratory protection consistently and correctly is critical to protecting your health.